Um, one of Bruce's issues is that he is reactive to people coming come in the door. I really think that he, the lack of rules in the house has kind of given him the impression that he needs to be in charge of security. That seems to be a job that he's well suited for. Problem is we haven't trained him to be in charge of security. And so sometimes he does the wrong things. So cleaning the area around the door uh, is a great way for children, uh, for dogs to actually see the human doing a leadership role. And protecting the group is a very important role for dogs. So we have one of the kids outside and in a couple of seconds, he's gonna uh, ring the doorbell and knock. Now because Bruce here is a little bit reactive, I've kind of demonstrated this for his guardian and she is gonna be the one that's actually gonna be answering the door. I'm gonna be coaching her through it. When you have a dog that's reactive, you just don't wanna push the boundaries. We wanna make sure we put the dog in a position to succeed. Dogs get better at anything that they do, just like uh, we do, the more they practice, including being aggressive uh, or being territorial. So uh, there you go, buddy, thank you. Um, so basically, um, we're waiting for him to finish knocking. Now, what happens typically when you have people come to your door is you're not prepared for it. You're in the middle of cooking, and you're talking on the phone, and you're talking to one of the kids with homework, and then something comes to the door and we're rushing. We're trying to, to turn the faucet off, or wash your hands, turn the faucet off, turn the stove down, tell the kids to relax, and then get to the door all at the same time. The dog sees us rushing, and the dog's like, wow, she's really laid back all the time. Suddenly now she's all worked up. All right, so now we're gonna have him bark. So basically what we wanna, uh, what we wanna do is you wanna call, have people call or text you ahead of time so that they know, so that you know who the person is and you're prepared for it, you can wipe your hands. All right, so let's go ahead and normally he would be more, there we go. So go ahead and get up and answer the door. All right, go ahead and turn when you get to the line. Right there, turn. Now take one step backwards. Another step. So we just pause a quarter of a second in between each step just to make sure that we're punctuating our movements. And one more. And then she's going to break down answering the door into individual steps. So I would have you step one. There you go. So she's going to, first of all, keep her hips pointed at the dog the whole time. Or she's going to reach back and she's going to twist just the deadbolt. And you're going to watch the dog. So when you hear those sounds, those are sounds that usually are preceded with the door opening. So those are what we call triggers. It causes the dog to think, ooh, the door, somebody's gonna come in, I'm, I'm revved up for it. All right, so now we're gonna break it down, do it a little bit faster. There you go. All right, so now we've broken that step down. Now we're gonna go to the handle. She's gonna slap the handle several times. And you wanna do these as loud as possible to make it as close to, you know, what as difficult as possible. Oh, that's awesome. When he sits down, that's taking a more subordinate position. All right, so now I'm gonna have you unlock the deadbolt. You're gonna open it just a crack, but don't, don't let him push it up in if he tries to come in. Wait there, buddy. Wait there, buddy. All right, so we have the sound of the doorbell. Now you're gonna to shift to this side of the door. Keep up, oh, don't turn your hips away from him. So always keep your hips pointed at the dog. There we go. Now he helped you out there, but in the future, if it's a real person, he's gonna be excited. He will rush up at that point. So now put your hand on the handle and t face the dog and take a step forward as you open the door behind you. And keep opening it all the way. There you go. Now if the dog at any point, oh, you're gonna stay right there, buddy. If the dog at any point had started to come across the line, going from the carpet to the tile, the human would stop what she was doing and rush at the dog. And we stop the second, oh, rush at it, rush. There we go. So he is not allowed to cross that line under any capacity when people are at the door. The rest of the time he can go hang out. And the fact that he went laid away further away, that's awesome. So now this is, he kind of probably knew it was little man. He's nice and relaxed right now, but I would have you and Ben text or call each other. And again, when you have people dropping someone off, have them call or text you ahead of time so you can wash your hands and practice this. This is one of my favorite exercises because usually 10 or 12 times, the dog will just sit and wait right here and just be, look at you and see like, are you gonna answer that door? But this is very different behavior than you normally have when anybody comes to the door. Yep. No barking, no lunging, no being in front of you. Now, normally he's gonna beat you to the door, but if you catch it like this where he's casual and he's behind you, as soon as you cross the line, then stop and enforce it there. You don't have to let him go all the way to the door. But by doing this, uh, it helps him see you guys as the authority figures and then helps him see, I don't need to be, my services as a bouncing dog are no longer needed. Um, one last thing real quick. If the guests, um, the guests don't uh, cross the line, if they stay in the entryway, the dog doesn't get to interact with them at all. 
So you might have some people come and drop stuff off and leave. That is actually helpful for the dog as well because it teaches the dog just because somebody comes in doesn't mean you get to interact with them or you need to even worry. They might not even come fully into the house. And like I said, off camera, if you have somebody who is afraid of dogs and they come to the door and see your dog staying 10 feet away, they feel comfortable because of that distance. Now, if he barks or growls or any of those things, we don't disagree with any of those. All we care about is him staying behind the line right here. That's the only thing. Eventually, the growling and barking and all that will dissipate as he relaxes and watches you guys handling this. Um, so I'd like you guys to try to practice this one at least once a day, but the more you practice it, the better at they'll get. So since you have a lot of kids that are coming in, maybe ha train them how to do it. And hey, if you, we'll give you one of those M&M rewards if you go to the door, if you ring the doorbell before you come in. Um, all right, and the rest of the time that I can go hang out at the door, just not when guests are here. So this is how we can, use, how we can add a little bit of structure to the uh, uh, ritual of having people come to our door and train our dog how we want them to behave during this activity. Brucey, let's get a sit to end this one. Very good.